Did you ever listen to somebody talk about a great pitcher in baseball and they would say, wow, that guy, he's got so many incredible different pitches. Well, the truth of the matter is he probably doesn't. He's probably got five or six. Fastball, curveball, you know, slow ball, change up pitch, et cetera, et cetera. Well, everyone knows I have a lot of different concepts, a lot of different strategies, a lot of different philosophies, a lot of different approaches, concepts, ideas, et cetera. But right now, today, here, I want to share four. Four very powerful, very, very applicable, very universal principles I think you need to know and then I think you need to use in your business. Watch and see. The first thing is just delivering higher than expected levels of service that are recognized and appreciated by them. Second, communicating frequently with your client to nurture them. You know, anybody here have a good friend, a very best friend? Raise your hand. I bet you call them, text them, email them, uh, visit with them very frequently, maybe daily, maybe weekly if they're localized, but often, right? The, the, the more frequent the communication, the richer, the closer the relationship. That should be the metaphor analogy with you and your client, although the communication can't be self-serving. It's got to be externally important. But as long as you've got things to talk about that better them, the more frequently you keep in touch, the more strategically you keep in touch, the more business they'll do, the longer they'll do it, the more people they'll tell. Uh, increasing the conversion rate from inquiry to sale. First of all, increase your sales skills. Get trained in consultative advisory selling. Next, acquire clients at break even up front and make a profit on the back end. Um, very important. When you get strategic, you realize the game you're playing is not momentary, it's the end. And if you've only got one product to sell, you need a starter process. Starter process can be uh, a way to engage people. When I was in, I, I had a very a very successful first experience in the mail order business. We had a product called Icy Hot, and Icy Hot was a, this goes back long ago, 30 years, Icy Hot was an analgesic balm like Bengay or mentholatum, and we sold it by mail for $3. And when we looked at the business, we bought an old business, it wasn't doing well, but we realized that every time somebody started using it, 50% of the people bought every month forever till they died, or somebody would come up with a cure for arthritis. Back then it sold for $3, and it cost us 45 cents to manufacture and ship out bulk rate. It's a long time ago. I'm older than most of you. And the, uh, we didn't have any money, but we needed to start a relationship. So I went to 1,000 radio stations, television stations, publications, and told them if they would run our ads and our commercials when they had unsold time or space, we would let them keep all the front money, the first sale. So that would start the relationship. Um, we will sometimes sell a modest, for me, modest is a couple hundred dollar product. Well, that starts a relationship. From there, you move them to a thousand dollars or you move them to five thousand. But sometimes by adding an easier starting point, you get a lot more people in the pipeline. Sometimes by adding a more expensive secondary product service, you make all the effort you've made much more valuable. But you need to look this out and put it all in place. Um, uh, guaranteeing purchase, it's like, it's like risk reversal we talked about. Host beneficiary, this is where you get other people to be your endorser, to access their list, their members, their subscribers, their affinity. Uh, I made a million dollars one time when I was doing, I used to do seminars teaching people how to be marketing consultants, and I would go to Entrepreneur Magazine, and I would find all the people running full page ads, training people and other things. Um, utilities auditing, uh, real estate tax abatement, expense reduction, and I'd get them to let me pay to go to their list of prospects who responded but didn't buy with a letter that said something like this. We were so flattered when you initially inquired about our, our uh, program and we were we were disappointed you didn't go forward, but obviously at that time you wanted to pursue an entrepreneurial career or a new, or a new challenge you, we, we, we assumed either the timing wasn't right, our proposition wasn't right, the, the economics weren't right, but if you're still interested and ours isn't right, we'd like to introduce you to somebody who's got a proposition that applies to every business out there, because mine did, that lets you try it out before you could buy, because mine did, lets you pay for most of it afterwards, because mine did, that lets you experience half of it before you're committed and at least get the facts, and we made a million dollars by harnessing and mining they're rejects. So it's thinking about who else has access to your market. Um, 
Increasing the average transaction size of the sale. Improving your team's selling techniques to upsell and cross-sell. This happens when you get the strategy preeminence and realize that people, you're, do, you're stealing from me if you let me buy less than I should. If you let me buy less quality, less quantity, less combinations that, I, that will give me a lesser outcome, then you have a moral obligation and you need to have the greatest consultative selling skills to be able to convey that to me in an authoritative way. Uh, packaging complementary products and services together to make it easy to buy, but thus also you, you get rewarded for your contribution. It's not the other way around. You don't make contribution after you're rewarded, you make the contribution first. Uh, increasing your pricing and hence your margins. Changing the profile of your products to more up. Offering greater or larger units of purchase. The Costco model. Uh, how do you get, uh, how do you increase the transaction frequency on the, uh, you develop a back end, we just talked about that. You communicate more often by letter, phone, etc. You endorse other people's products to your list if they're complimentary and beneficial. You do special events such as closed door, limited release, advanced knowledge. Programming clients beneficially, not manipulatively, not like Jim Jones, but at the point of sale. I mean, ever, anyone ever flown on the airplane and seen the old ads for Karis uh, negotiating and they say, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate? Well, you get what you ethically and honorably program. If your goal is to start a relationship where you're going to be my most trusted advisor for life and you're going to be there for me to turn to at every interval and you're going to communicate me with me whenever you think it's necessary and you're going to give me ideas and advice and, act, and, and your assessment and you're going to want me to feel comfortable to turn to you, to listen to you, to bring people to you, and you don't say that to me, what makes you think I'm going to be perceptive enough and psychic enough to understand that? You need to program me for the outcome you want and that's going to be in my best interest at the beginning of the relationship. Does that make sense? And it's very simplistic, but nobody does it. 